Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's Tech Tuesday. Today's topic is the benefits of automating building wide access brought to you by Butterfly MX. My name is Eric Pell. I am the integrations product specialist here at Rent Manager. I've been with Rent Manager for three and a half years now, and it's my job to be the Rent Manager product expert for all of our partners. So what is Tech Tuesday? Well, Tech Tuesday is a webinar focused on how technology is impacting the property management industry. Our integrated providers deliver valuable insights on how they're solving today's business problems by demonstrating how their integration works with Rent Manager. And here with us today to talk about the benefits of automating building building wide access is Cyrus with Butterfly MX. Cyrus, I am going to go ahead and pass it over to you. Everybody, I hope you all enjoy the presentation. Great. Thank you, Eric. Let me just uh, show my screen here and get up here into slideshow mode. Perfect. All right. How does that look? Looking good, Cyrus. Thank you. All right. Listen, great to meet everybody. My name is Cyrus Claffey, and I'm the founder of Butterfly MX. Um, hopefully, you've seen one of our touch screens at the front of a, a building in whatever market you're in, or maybe you're already using Butterfly MX today, which is awesome. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, how you can get more out of the platform that we have. You know, just to give you a little bit of background, um, you know, I've been in the business for about 20 years or so, and I started out doing technology infrastructure design in new construction, you know? And um, this is back in the day, way, way, way before there was anything such as a uh, in-unit or a smart lock, in-unit smart systems or anything like, anything like that. The, the most people had was a plasma TV in the amenity space and uh, choice in terms of service providers in unit. So we've come a long way as an industry, especially the prop tech piece of it. And um, excited to talk to you a little bit about um, building automation and what that means, why it's important, okay, and um, and how also obviously Butterfly MX can can help automate your building and the workflows uh, at your building in order to achieve better outcomes for property managers, owners, and of course tenants, right? So um, you know, I guess the first thing is what is building automation? You know, technically, uh, I mean, this is the definition. It's the centralized control of building systems to make the property more efficient and create soft uh, and create cost savings. And really, what it is is it's about the various systems in the building communicating together so that you can create more optimized workflows, right, to get more done more efficiently, and that can result in cost savings. It can also obviously result in a better tenant experience, right? Using your smartphone to unlock a door, that's a great kind of thing to achieve. And that's from putting in some of these systems, right? So building um, automation is when these systems are now connected in, in one larger workflow. Just a couple of quick examples, something that you're all familiar with, I'm sure, is energy management, right? So um, in a lot of buildings now, for example, when the price of the kilowatt price of electricity per hour goes up, what happens is a signal gets sent to the BMS system, right? And the BMS system will lower the thermostat, let's say by a degree or two, and this reduces the power consumption of the chiller. And guess what? You're no longer buying electricity at peak price times, you're buying electricity at, or using less at the peak price times, and then you might be using a little more when the price of electricity is lower, like at night, right, in order to achieve a lot of the ends that you want to achieve with the building. So that's kind of a classic example of building automation. And again, I think it's one that a lot of folks are already familiar with. They may not know that technically that falls under the building automation rubric. The other example is things like maintenance requests, okay? A resident files um, a work order for, let's say, fixing their fridge or, you know, their sink is backed up in the kitchen. That work order creates a ticket that goes to the maintenance person or a third-party vendor, right? And as part of that maintenance ticket, um, they get an access credential, which when they get to the building can get them into the front entrance, up the elevators, and into the unit, right? So that's an example of, you know, your maintenance system talking to an access system in order to create a frictionless workflow 
right? That that um, doesn't require the on-site property management staff to kind of meet the guy at the front entrance, take him up into the unit, right, and wait for him. So again, these are like examples, high-level examples of what building automation is. Why is this important? Well, look, in our multifamily space, right? You know, we've been dealing with packages, I don't know, since basically I've been in prop tech, right? And it's the, the problem's only gotten worse, obviously, with COVID. And it's going to get more and more kind of extreme because guess what? As consumers, our habits are changing, right? We're buying more things online. And, um, and you know, by I think it's 2030, about 30% of all of our retail, consumer retail shopping is going to actually be done online. So that's one huge tailwind. In addition to that, think about it. We all use our smartphones to kind of operate our lives. And things like dog walkers, things like um, house cleaners, when you move in, when you move out, you're using all of those services via your smartphone. How does a property kind of deal with all these different things, the food deliveries, the package deliveries, the service providers coming in, right? You have to kind of think of new ways in order to handle that flow of people. And things like building automation and automated workflows are ways to actually deal with that efficiently. Other big tailwind is increasing labor costs, right? Everybody's familiar with the great resignation. You know, what's interesting is, is that the great resignation was already going on in multifamily a little bit because a lot of folks, you know, they've been in the business since the, since the 80s. You know, it's a tough industry. They want to retire, right? And so um, another example is people, maintenance guys, maintenance, you know, ground staff going to other companies, getting jobs in, in other industries, working at an Amazon facility, for example, right? And so that's driven uh, an increase in labor costs, right? And of course, right now in our recessionary environment, what we've seen is the rising interest rates in order to cool the economy. And when interest rates go up, of course, what that means is, of course, rents have come down too simultaneously in a lot of markets. And so you don't really have a lot of places you can look for as an owner or an operator. And so you look to make things more efficient. Maybe there's a cap on hiring. And so, all right, how do I deal with the increase like deliveries? And, and different types of people coming into the building, right? Um, and so what you look for is more efficiency in terms of how the operations are managed in, in the building in order to do more with less, okay? And then I think some of you are probably also familiar with this trend in multifamily, which I think is being driven in part by the things I just talked about, right? Which is centralization of management. So when you have a cluster of buildings in a geographic area, can I share that one maintenance guy? Can I share the leasing person across multiple buildings, right? The only way you can achieve that is if you use automated kind of workflows, right? That allow for remote management, that allow for kind of things to happen without property managers, or somebody in the leasing department having to be there step by step to make sure everything happens, right? So building automation, enables all of those things. And now let me kind of give you guys some examples, right? Let's like bring this on home a little more with specifics. Self-guided tours, that's a great example of like an automated workflow. I'm a, you know, a new prospect, I look on a website, I want to go take a look at an apartment. All right, well, I schedule a tour, right, using the touring software. When I show up at the building, I'm getting a credential that allows me to get into the building, check out the amenity spaces, right? If the elevator's locked, I need that credential to get me up to the, um, up to the floor of the units I'm gonna check out. And then with smart locks, I can get in. Again, I'm using that one credential to get in, look at these apartments, right? That whole process, right? Starting on the website where there's a widget embedded all the way through to taking a look at the property and then being prompted to, right? To, hey, do you want more information about this property, right? All of that is an example of an automated workflow. Same thing with vendor management, right? I kind of alluded to this example of maintenance request. So when you have um, maintenance tickets being generated, or let's say you have you know, pest control and the fire alarm inspector coming on a regular basis, how can I automate those processes, right? How can I make sure that they can get in when they need to get in, they can do their thing, get around the building without having to have one of the onsite staff 
accompany that person everywhere, right? So vendor management is another great example of putting together kind of different systems, right? I have the inspection software, I have the access software working together in order to let people do that on their own without requiring on-site staff. Amenity reservations, okay? So I think this is kind of a very interesting idea of, you know, a lot of folks have, have spaces that's great on the tour. As we all know, the amenity spaces will often sell new prospects. Well, what happens? Once people move into the building, they don't really use it that much, right? So the amenity space is great kind of to get people, you know, leased, but wouldn't it be great if you could actually also monetize that space, right, when it's not being used? And things like amenity reservations allow either the residents to schedule a time when they want to use the grills, they want to use the uh, amenity areas, or even third parties, right? People who don't reside in the building, but let's say you want to do a corporate event, right, um, out by the pool and the grills. Okay, amenity reservation systems allow them to go ahead, schedule those times, pay for that space, and then get the automated access to come in. And so remote property access, that's, that's something that's very important, obviously, to things like centralization, where I've got a bunch of different properties in a cluster. I've got one leasing manager or one on-site property manager over, overseeing all those properties. How do I get vendors and other people into the property without having to meet somebody, right? And, and unlock the door. Remote property access is key to being able to do that. Pun intended, by the way. Um, and of course, it's just the automation of all the different types of workflows in the building, right? So that um, people don't have to do repetitive tasks over and over. And, if, and of course, you know, the most classic example of that is package delivery, right? We all know back in the day, you know, people have to sit there with a book and, you know, take kind of um, uh, write down every single package that was delivered, make sure that the residents get them. Well, you know, the proliferation of packages made package management the number one issue, right, in multifamily for many, many years. And so, you know, what's happened is you have all these different types of systems now that automate how packages are handled, you know, once they get to the property between that time and when they get into the hands of the residents, right? So those are all examples of building automation. What's interesting is, from the Butterfly MX perspective is all of these things are enabled by access control, okay? So, um, and I'm gonna dive into that a little bit more as I tell you more about what Butterfly MX does, but you know, without being able to open doors automatically and let that, that uh, new prospect do it on their own at the front of the building to get into the unit, right? Again, the sprinkler inspector getting into the building and getting around the building to the back of the house, to check out all the sprinkler heads and wherever they need to go. All of that stuff requires doors to be opened automatically so that people can go about what it is they need to do on site at the building. And that's something that we do. So, you know, Butterfly Max, you probably know the brand. You know, our focus is, is really on making access simple. Okay, so um, what does that mean? That means we wanna take all the burden of using an access control platform to enable those workflows, to enable any kind of access really, we want to take away all the friction around that and make it an easy to use, seamless experience, right? So if you're a property manager or an owner, you know, onboarding new tenants, um, having the tenants use the functionality of the system is all intuitive and easy because that really makes for a better experience. And when you have a better experience, guess what? You're going to use it more frequently and use things to their capacity. So for us, right, you know, historically, the journey has started the, at the front of the building because we invented the smart intercom. And, you know, what's great about that is actually being at the front of the building is one of the most critical places in terms of all of the different types of automated workflows that I was talking about. For example, self-guided tours. One of the biggest challenges of enabling self-guided tours at your property is how do you get people in the front of the building, right? Same thing on maintenance requests, you know, when somebody's coming to fix something in the building or inspect something in the building, how do you get them into the building? So being at the front of the building is really one of the most critical places in terms of enabling all of those automated workflows. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, uh, in as many buildings as we are, there's a ton of buildings still with old school, old style um, intercom systems, telephone entry systems, push buzzer systems, all kinds of things. 
and you know the question we always ask folks is do you really want your building to present this way right when you have the option to instead have a butterfly mx touchscreen at the front of the building that makes a video call to our mobile app so just a little bit for for folks who aren't that familiar with us one of the groundbreaking things about butterfly mx is traditionally in order to have video intercom you needed to run wires throughout the whole building well with our mobile app, you don't need to run any wires. So it's really simple to install our platform in the building because residents simply download the mobile app and they can get video calls from the mobile app. They can use the mobile app to open doors, right, with their phone. They can also get calls from visitors. They can issue pins to their visitors coming in. So there's a wealth of functionality and features that the mobile app enables for the residents. And it's the same thing for the property managers, right? So with property managers, one of the first things that we did is we sync with the different PMS systems, right? Like rent manager and so forth, so that when somebody moves into the building, their name automatically gets populated in the Butterfly MX database and on the touchscreen at the front of the building. They can download the mobile app themselves, right? And so we make it as easy as possible for people to onboard themselves and not have to involve property management um, unless they need special attention, right? And what's great is, is that because we were so popular at the front of the building, a lot of our customers said, hey, can you do more? You know, we've got um, a need for key fobs inside the building, right? We've got locked elevators. Um, how do we deal with packages when they get in? So over time, we've rolled out a complete building-wide or unified access platform that really covers every single door in the building. Starts at the front, of course, with the intercom, the package room where delivery drivers, UPS, FedEx, and so on can drop off their packages. We've got key fob systems for every door in the building, you know, whether it's the amenity spaces or the telco room or the leasing office in the back of the house, elevator controls if you have locked elevators, and of course, for drive up gates, um, we have vehicle access and smart locks for the apartments. So now with smart locks, residents can use their smartphone to open the door to their apartment. They can issue credentials to people who are coming to visit them in their apartment. And just as importantly, property managers don't need to rekey those doors when somebody moves out. Or if there's a maintenance request, um, the maintenance person can get into the door with a credential issued by the property manager, right? And, you know, I think what this now means is if you look at this, um, this diagram of a building, really every single door throughout the property, right, from the front entrance to the elevators can be covered by Butterfly MX so that you can have an end-to-end -end unified access solution. And once you have that in place, folks, it opens up a world of possibilities in terms of how you can make the workflows at the building more efficient. Just ask you to kind of, you know, stop and think for a minute, how often does a member of the staff have to go meet somebody, whether it's a new prospect, whether it's a resident moving in, right? You gotta meet them, hand them keys, right? Whether you're meeting, again, that fire alarm inspector, the pest control guy, or the person doing an emergency, repair. How often do you have to meet them? How often do the residents have to go meet folks, right? So this unified access platform allows you to eliminate all of that time that the on-site staff has to, has to kind of interact with folks just to open up a door, right? And what's also great, you know, from the property management perspective is that all of this is managed from our online dashboard, right? And the dashboard provides you the ability to onboard people, right? Because it's connected up with your PMS system. So as I mentioned before, new move-ins appear in the uh, property management platform on their move-in date, and then they're automatically deleted on their move-out date. So no more kind of, oh gosh, do I need to add that resident and being backed up on doing that? Or as we often find with telephone entry systems, you know, people never get around to deleting the resident, right? Because sometimes you have to call a specialist just to log into your telephone entry system. You know, the other thing is, is that you get the analytics. So how often are people coming in? You know, is there information I can glean on which entrance they're using to get into the building? All of that is covered in the analytics. And of course you can do things like building wide messaging, sending out messages to folks as well, right? And it's really because of all of this functionality, right? And the ability to 
provide now this complete unified solution that we're now used in over 10,000 buildings, right? And we've become really the industry standard in terms of access control for the multifamily industry because so much of what we do is really designed to solve problems that you tell us about, right? And so um, we work very, very closely with a lot of folks in the business to address different types of problems that can be automated um, using access control as the basis for that. So let me just take a little moment and, and, and kind of drill down on what some of the costs and the benefits are. Because at the end of the day, I think this is really important. And you know, the first thing, obviously, are cost savings. Package management, again, it's one of these things that's been an industry um, pain point for such a long time and continues to be. And you know, unfortunately, I think most people feel like it will in the future. So if, if you can figure out a way to automate access, you know, in our platform, for example, you can give all of the delivery drivers pins that allow them to automatically type those pins into the touchscreen and get into the building without having to call anybody. That makes the whole process more efficient, right? And um, things like workflow automations, okay? So I touched on move-ins. When you have to meet somebody in order to move them into the property, right, that takes up property management time. So automating that process where residents are given an access credential before they move on site that gets them in or when they move out without having to drop off the keys at, at the office and having to go through the process of, of notating that, that saves time on the part of the on-site team. So, you know, having automated access, having the smart locks allows the mobile app to basically be that credential. And then all you have to do is go into the property management dashboard to enable people and disable people. And that's all done automatically through the PMS integration. Voila, no need to actually worry about key management the same way you had to before you automated your building's access system. And then I think we touched on building operations just at the highest level, right? When you have repeat vendors coming to the property, how do you deal with them? How much time does that take up of the onsite staff? If you could automate that, would that be a time savings that you could use in other areas, right? To drive resident retention. So speaking of that, you know, I think um, obviously amenity space um, utilization, this is key, right? We have these amenity spaces. We'd like to be able to monetize them, but the effort involved of having to have somebody on site, you know, monitor things, monitor a party, right? To be there to meet people coming to a party. Well, if you can allow them to use an access control system to not only make the reservation, but get themselves, get their visitors or guests, I should say, into the space, whether it's the amenity space or rooftop deck, right, or the grill and pool area, it makes the ability to monetize those spaces and rent them out much, much easier, right? And so if you had that opportunity to do it more easily, would you? And could you monetize that and drop drop something down to your NOI right, that boosts the, the property's profitability? And, you know, things like leasing velocity, it's, it's really more about resident appeal, right? When people are looking for an apartment today, as we said, Everybody is like living by their smartphone. They use their smartphones for so many things. When they come to see a property where they can use that smartphone to get in the front of the building, to check out the units, to check out the amenity spaces, it creates a certain type of, I don't know, tech, tech amenitization that appeals to a lot of today's renters, especially given that so many of them are millennials, right? And they're tech natives who appreciate the efficiency of being able to schedule their own time to get into various places, right? The only way you can do that is by having a unified access platform that's at the property. And look, I think you've all probably seen that um, rental rates can be enhanced by things like smart locks, by things like mobile app enabled access control at a property. Um, we certainly, you know, hear from a lot of our customers that having a touchscreen at the front entrance creates a, a lot of curb appeal, right? And again, it's this idea of the property having tech amenitization, right, which helps not only with the leasing velocity, but helps with retention. Because what we found is, is like once people start to use smart technology and smart access, they don't want to stop using it. 
right? And in fact, what's what's wonderful is, you know, we'll get these um, emails from from people moving from one city to another saying, hey, you know, I'm moving down to Charleston. Could you tell me what buildings have Butterfly MX in it? So obviously we're delighted when, when we uh, get queries like that. So these are just different ways that, you know, having a unified access platform kind of embedding technology into your operational workflows and your resident experiences can really add um, an opportunity to generate some additional revenue that falls to your, um, your bottom line. So just a little bit about Rent Manager um, and the integration between Rent Manager and Butterfly MX. Um, you know, I think probably first and foremost, what's most important to you on a day to day basis is the fact that we have that property management sync. So as I alluded to before, when somebody moves into the building, their their name will appear in the property manager Butterfly MX dashboard and on our touchscreen at the front of the building only on their move in date and on their move out date it's automatically deleted. So gone are the days where the property manager has to remember to add somebody's name in and also delete it. And now look, what's great about that is when their name appears in on their move out date, guess what? That means they can also, or appears in their move in date. What that means is they can also download the mobile app, register themselves. And now all of a sudden that mobile app becomes the key that they use to get around the whole building. So they don't need to come to the leasing office knock on the door, you know, sign out a key and a key fob and then bring it back. Instead, it's all being done when they log into the mobile app and register themselves. And so that just creates a great move in experience. They have control of the time when they can move in. They can get up and down the elevators if the elevators are key fobbed, again, without having to ask the onsite staff for assistance. And so that's really, really, I think, um, really kind of a great experience that people have that creates a great first impression, right? Um, and then, you know, as I said, once people move out, all of that functionality, they no longer have access to. So we really streamline this whole process and help create a much better resident experience. Um, you know, we'd love to have you also check out our other access control features like our key fobs and our smart locks so that you can have that unified access uh, experience at your property to take full advantage of some of those automated workflows that I touched on. Um, all right, so we do have a couple questions for you, Cyrus. Um, the first one we have for you is, uh, what happens if a resident does not have a smartphone? Will Butterfly MX still work for them? Yeah, that's a great question. Yes, um, it will absolutely work for them. You don't need a smartphone. You know, originally uh, when we got started, a lot of folks didn't have smartphones, right? So if you don't have a smartphone, we simply program in your home phone, your mobile number, your work number, whatever number you want as a resident into the, um, into the property management dashboard. And then you'll receive a call on that phone number. it will dial in line, just like a telephone entry system. Beautiful. Great. All right. The next question we have is, does the integration with Rent Manager work for all of your products or is it just for the intercom product? Well, so what's nice is because we have this unified access platform, when you integrate into the intercom product, it automatically integrates into all the other products as well. Oh, lovely. Perfect. Yeah. All right. We do have another question for you here. Um, how do you go upon setting up the integration? Uh, what's that process look like? What's the time frame from kind of the, you know, requesting activation to kind of being live with you guys? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So the way that works is, you know, when we onboard a new property, you work with a CSM, a customer success manager, who handles that whole process for the property. Um, and um, when you tell them, hey, I'm using Rent Manager, then what they'll do is they'll create a ticket on our side that goes into our sync team. I think, you know, it takes about a week, maybe two weeks on the outside, depending on how busy the sync team is. They're working constantly, and guess what? We use automated workflows for that as well. And so I would say it's a one or two week process. And what you wanna do is, is you wanna kind of count backwards from the go live date, right? In terms of all the various pieces of the puzzle and make sure that you're kind of notifying the CSM that you want that done in advance of your go live date so that when you do go live with the platform and it's installed, everything is working seamlessly. 
And is that customer success rep someone that will kind of uh, stick with the customer throughout the lifetime of using your product if they ever need like support or uh, just have questions or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, we go a step further. So Eric, I think one of the things we realized is, is customer success <clears throat> is so important to basically ensuring that the customers who are really partners have a good experience using the platform and they get the most out of it, right? And so part of that is we actually do proactive outreach to our customers um, on a quarterly or biannual basis to check in, see how things are going, see if they need any assistance. And of course, right, we also have um, a, I think it's a 24 seven hotline. So, you know, anytime you call into the company, you can speak to a live representative, you know, and they can route you to the appropriate person. But your customer success team, they stay with you for the life of your usage of the product. And again, they're there to really kind of help you get the most out of Butterfly MX and really kind of share good uh, tips in terms of how to do that. Love it. Cool. Thanks for answering that. Um, that does look like all the questions. So guys, if you think of something while I'm talking here, by all means, throw it in the question box and I have no problem asking that once I kind of get into my uh, exit slides here. Um, one thing I did want to say uh, is thank you very much, Cyrus, for taking time out of your day to, um, to speak to us and the audience here. I think that was fantastic. Uh, I see on the slide right now, guys, there's a phone number and a sales um, email address. So if you think of a question maybe later on today or maybe your coworkers want to know about something, uh, I think that would be a good place to start. Uh, you're also more than welcome to reach out to us at Rent Manager. We have a, a direct line. We can get in touch with Butterfly MX and uh, get those questions answered for you. Um, so that was excellent. Thank you so much, Cyrus. Um, I'm you're welcome, Eric. Yeah, yeah, thank you for having us today. We really appreciate the time to kind of educate the audience and tell them a little bit about Butterfly MX.